Uh, hello, participants. So I would like now to welcome you to the first lecture uh, in our project Connecting in Diversity Industry uh, through Smart Entrepreneurial uh, Cooperation and Competitive Intelligence of uh, students in uh, Moldavia, Georgia, and Armenia. So again, uh, my name uh, is uh, Emil Velinov, and um, uh, together uh, uh, today I will show you a presentation on or video material on digital communication strategy. So uh, to start, uh, before we uh, speak about the digital communication strategy, it's very important to um, explain what is a digitalization, what is a digital communication, what type of digital communication exists, and then we will shift to the uh, digital communication strategy. So from the very beginning, uh, we have to uh, underline that uh, the planet, uh, the, our planet uh, has uh, recorded a lot of um, big shift in the technology and big, big shift in the uh, in, uh, artificial intelligence because uh, nowadays uh, we can see that uh, the uh, different technologies, they have been substituted by uh, uh, latest internet of things, uh, digitalization and so on. So uh, the so-called pace of uh, technology substitution is uh, described uh, in the um, uh, model of uh, Adner and Kepper from 2016, who claimed that on the left side, you can see the level of the ecosystem emergence uh, challenge for the new technology. So if uh, the uh, ecosystem uh, will have a look in each of the quadrants, what are the variables? And then in the axis uh, X, we have the ecosystem extension, which is opportunity for the old technology to, to survive and to take place in the industries. So uh, looking into those four quadrants, there are four quadrants according to the model of Adner and Kapper from 2016, we can see that clearly that quadrant one uh, called uh, creative destruction um, is basically the description of the so-called fastest substitution which means that uh, from the 16 gigabyte in, uh, versus the eight uh, gigabyte uh, flash drive, for example, or the, uh, in the inkjet uh, uh, printers versus the dot matrix printers. So uh, uh, this type of technology, which uh, has uh, jumped or which has shifted uh, in our um, business life, in our daily life, uh, is was one of the uh, fastest. If we're looking at into quadrant two, where the model says that uh, in the so-called robust coexistence, the so-called gradual substitution uh, took place. So those are basically the so-called solid state versus the magnetic storage. A uh, good example could be the flash memory, which we're using or the USB, whatever we call that, uh, versus the hard disk drives, which we have in our personal computers or stationary computers. Um, then the hybrid engine versus the internal combustion engines, uh, if we're taking uh, from the technology perspective uh, for the vehicles, for the cars, uh, for the IT and ICT uh, areas, those are the so-called cloud computing versus the desktop computing, which in 2016 has changed as well. In the quadrant three, which is uh, called illusion of the resilience. So this is um, so-called stasis or status, which is followed by the so-called rapid substitution. A uh, good example could be how the paper maps the old school paper maps were substituted or um, uh, by the GPS navigators 
So the global positioning system uh, navigators, uh, not only uh, GPS, but also uh, the Galileo and many others. Uh, that uh, was uh, uh, incredible uh, and emergent uh, change uh, from the illusion of resilience. Also the high definition TV versus the standard definition TV, we know the resolution of the quality of the picture. Also the MP3 files uh, versus the CDs, the, which we used to listen to music quite a lot. So the format of the format of the music uh, files has changed a lot. And um, even I don't have to say here too much about Spotify, uh, Shazam and many other uh, music apps, how the music industry has significantly uh, has changed. The quadrant four uh, called robust resilience is about uh, uh, uh sector or quadrant where uh, the substitution took place uh, in a way smoother in a smoother manner a uh, good example would be the fully electric cars nowadays versus the traditional gasoline fueled cars so the conventional um, fuel the, also the rfid chips versus the barcodes which uh, we know very well then the DNA memory versus the semiconductor memory, uh, as you know, uh, used in the biomedical sectors. Uh, the cloud computer versus the desktop computing in the 90s as well. So all these quadrants, according to Adner and Kapoor, are uh, evidence for uh, how the technology across the world uh, has um, uh, shifted, has moved, uh, ahead and how the planet was uh, affected even before COVID with the technological advancement. If we are looking at into um, digitalization from theory of communication, so how the um, different uh, uh, segments of customers, how the different segments of um, clients um, are reacting uh, to these uh, shifts or paradigm of technology, we can see the so-called model called uh, diffusion of uh, innovation model, which uh, uh, separates or divides uh, the people, the segments into five categories from uh, digital uh, perspective or digitalization perspective, how the people, how the customers are, um, perceiving innovation, how they're perceiving technology uh, advancement. So we, we have here roughly into percentage uh, divided into innovators, then the early adopters, then the early majority, the late majority, and then the laggards. So from the uh, innovator perspective, we can say that those are uh, the people, the customers who are following uh, the latest the latest um, uh, trends uh, into uh, different technologies and those are pretty important uh, for um, you know for the different segments because uh, those people those clients they buy the latest uh, technology let's say we can say uh, a good example could be with iPhone it could be uh, the use of the latest technology in a different industries, uh, doesn't have to be only with IT and uh, mobiles. So the you know, I know innovators are 2.5 uh, from perspective uh, of, uh, from percentage uh, and market share. However, they are uh, described as a active information seekers. So they are looking all the time for the latest information as I stated. And uh, we have uh, really, um, we can have a look in as a snapshot, uh, snapshot, snapshot. Sorry, in uh, into the, um, uh, for example, in our uh, environments, in the universities, in the organizations. Good example here could be uh, the so-called um, Snapchat spectacles, right? Because uh, we have um, as a gadgets. If we're thinking about different gadgets, uh, which are the smart technologies. 
uh, used nowadays in the different industries, it could be a, a brilliant example for uh, innovators uh, uh, represented to 5.5 from the total uh, amount. Then the second, the early adopters, we have um, so-called opinion leaders who are uh, really excited and happy to acquire, to adopt new products. And also uh, they are looking for uh, innovation and uh, for information from the, their peers, from their friends, from their colleagues. So they're following as well, but not uh, as much as the innovators do. And here uh, uh, also those early adapters are a uh, percentage from the clients where they have uh, also affinity to acquire uh, new products which are on the market. Then the uh, third category, the early majority, the early majority, uh, one of the most significant group here in terms of percentage. So uh, they on purpose before adopting the new product, they kind of uh, would like to know about the functionality, about the opportunities, how these digital platforms are working before they acquire or before they subscribe for them. The late majority, the late majority, uh, that's also significant group from the segments. So the late majority are the so-called um, uh, skeptical, right? Skeptical um, uh, listeners and skeptical users of uh, technologies because uh, they still uh, own their own older uh, feature and they're not so much open into innovation and to uh, new things. And then the last but not least, we have the laggards uh, who are all the time, you know, people from the society or from the market who are um, suspicious who are you know doubting about the functionality and they do not uh, think that um, the latest technology will help anyhow uh, you know the users and the, the uh, humanity and also the planet or the business so uh, this diffusion uh, model of the innovation model uh, shows basically how the, this digital communication um, is divided across the people, across the segments, and we all have in the different industry all these different types of uh, clients. Let's now uh, shift our um, uh, attention to the dig uh, digitalization uh, and uh, communication or digital communication. So we have to say that digital communication is the process of uh, uh, connecting uh, with the people across uh, different channels, online channels, according to Bloomberg. Um, there are so many, of course, definitions on that. So other definition could be uh, that uh, according to the general manager of eBay, who states that uh, uh, we have technology finally that for the first time in human history allows people to uh, really maintain the rich uh, connections with a much larger numbers of people. But then uh, more interesting even uh, definition I found from the uh, guru in uh, digital marketing, uh, Mr. Michael Caper, who defines the so-called five uh, characteristics which uh, 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 stipulate the set uh, of uh, digital communication apart from the, of course, from the traditional communication method. So according to his model, the digital communication um, is uh, more interactive. First of all, he describes as uh, more interactive, then is uh, more participatory, then is more egalitarian, uh, then the fourth is more uh, decentralized and less uh, hierarchical. So in these uh, features characteristics, is, um, they're all very important because uh, it describes the uh, in the second decade of 21st century, basically the, um, how the uh, stakeholders, how the people uh, communicate, 
how the companies, the firms, the organizations are using different uh, digital uh, communication platforms, for example, to use uh, more interactive, uh, more participatory, more egalitarian, more decentralized and less hierarchical uh, manner of um, communication. Because uh, first of all, because of the world global connectivity, because of Internet of Things, because of the um, artificial intelligence uh, and because of the uh, globalization, uh, indeed, uh, uh, people are uh, in a way closer to each other uh, meant from perspective of uh, means of uh, communication channels and uh, use of um, usage of the digital uh, platforms. So uh, let's have a look why uh, or what are the reasons you know, for uh, digital communication. We need to understand uh, that, okay, we have it, but then why this uh, digital communication is taking place uh, you know, across um, or among the people, among the organizations. So first of all, here we have the so-called building a brand because um uh, when we have uh, i mean when, when we have our organization and we have a brand we need to make sure that our brand image is uh, extremely uh, strong uh, the brand um, uh, has uh, basically protection um, in front of the company which uh, represents but also the brand is the driver of uh, our services, of our products, whatever we do. So it uh, doesn't matter from what industry we are coming from. It's important that uh, basically the strong brand uh, represents the organization from its uh, full bright. The building awareness, because with the digital communication, with the means or the help of digital uh, communication, we can uh, build up on the awareness. So the organization, of course, can have a so-called wide net to let their uh, potential, uh, you know, subscribers, customers, to know about product, service, and value. So uh, here, similar, if we are uh, in an um, uh, organization where basically uh, the values and uh, the common policy are promoted on all levels, then for everyone is easy to be aware of uh, what are uh, what is the brand of the company, how the people, the employees are communicating among each other, what are the product services, but also the values which are commonly shared, uh, not only within the company, but also with the customers and other stakeholders. Um, the next one is liaisoning conversation because you know how important it is to maintain the dialogue uh, with uh, the stakeholders, with the clients, with the debtors, with the colleagues, which means the internal external communication, uh, digital communication. So uh, maintaining this uh, conversation uh, makes basically uh, the clients and also the people uh, uh, curious uh, they would like to know more about uh, the products and the services, so they rather uh, also can uh, use the different digital pl platforms to get information instead of, of course, going and uh, physically going to the store. Uh, however, uh, also uh, COVID-19 and the travel restrictions also made the way that uh, the, the companies had to boost their digital platforms in order to inform their customers uh, online. Educating consumers, because educating uh, consumers is important that um, the organizations, they uh, address the different uh, barriers and challenges of the customers and they help them, the, the customers, to uh, improve their experience, to get uh, a better overview of uh, what um, uh, basically um, products and services are offered. So uh, from that perspective, um, that the companies, um, you know, in general, the organizations are trying to uh, focus a lot on the so-called 
digital content, which uh, uh, nowadays is uh, very important to have a content, like to have a purpose, but at the same time to have uh, uh, through the di digital platform. So the digital content uh, constantly uh, created and build it up on that. Uh, it's vital for, um, uh, you know, for the public and private sector is vital for the university, but also for any other industries where we have uh, also uh, quite use of uh, technologies. Um, following on the reasons uh, for digital, digital communication, we have the so-called uh, creating employees and customers experience because um, nowadays uh, you can imagine that uh, having, uh, having um, you know, different type of customers, as I said, um, uh, doesn't matter the public or the private sector, uh, it's important to uh, create for the customer's experience so they can come back again and we need to have uh, we need to have uh, uh, that happening through the all different channels digital channels which are at the moment at uh, disposal uh, for all of us of course here we can um, speak about the internal uh, or employer branding because this is the way how the communication has been uh, basically disseminated and uh, circulating across the organizations. So there are quite a lot of uh, different uh, internal external chat apps or chat programs, also live stream videos. Uh, uh, also, there are quite a lot of uh, other opportunities for example, for short memos, when the um, company uh, disseminates some results across uh, or among the employees. Uh, the next factor is called managing risk because um, the companies or the organization, they have to conduct to do so-called uh, damage control by uh, building brand affinity and improving brand reputation after a mishap. So it means that uh, if something happened with the company uh, related to some external or internal, um, in a way, short shortcut, uh, then uh, the companies, the organizations, they have to make sure that uh, through the different uh, digital channels, they inform their clients and inform their business partners and also inform about uh, what's uh, what is um, uh, you know in front of what risk they are facing uh, how they have to deal with that uh, providing entertainment so the providing entertainment uh, we have to know that uh, from the digital perspective or digital platform digital content perspective the um, organizations are trying to put in the iCloud uh, of course, uh, uh, more interactive, uh, from more interesting uh, content, uh, which will uh, capture the attention of uh, readers or the viewers, viewership, increasing viewership, and uh, increasing uh, or getting the reach, which uh, is in the strategy of the organization. This is very important. That's why the digital platforms are here uh, widely used. So from um, digital communication, we have to look into the category of uh, dividing the dividing the stakeholders, the customers into um, digital uh, native versus uh, digital immigrants. So uh, what we call that, uh, the, for example, the uh, digital immigrants are those people who in the companies, but also the customers who are uh, adopters of uh, the so-called web technologies, they uh, rather uh, prefer to talk in person. So it means face-to-face -face. logical learners. They try to learn from the uh, savvy, from the logical way, focusing on one task at a time. Uh, preferring to have interaction with one or few people rather than many, so not to be having multi-conversations. 
get info information from the traditional news uh, sites and so on versus the digital natives who are uh, who are born during uh, or after the digital age so generation z generation y millennials uh, always on uh, attached to a phone or other device so it means keeping the phone always with him or herself intuitive learners so it means that they learn as it comes multitask and rapidly task uh, switch so they can do a lot of tasks um, at the same time or switching from one to another so processing of uh, lots of information extremely social and also multimedia oriented so it means that uh, using as i said a different uh, social networks but also digital platform that's very typical for the digital natives and uh, uh, with the digitalization, we have to uh, mention one more phenomenon called uh, the digitalization disruption. So this digitalization disruption comes with uh, four pillars, which nowadays uh, describe uh, basically um, the shift of the technologies, but also how the organizations, how the employees, how the people are communicating. So first of all, it's called uh, unprecedented transparency because in the cyber space uh, there are quite a lot of um, uh, cyber attacks and also we have to say that um, being digitally uh, connected and uh, born digitally it means that it can uh, bring us in front of the danger for cyber attacks and so on the intelligent system the intelligent system we have to say that uh, artificial intelligence, robotization, customization are taking place in a lot of industries. And uh, this is a natural development of, um, from technology perspective, but also from perspective of how we perceive the world. So uh, by using the Internet of Things, uh, 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 artificial intelligence in a different uh, context of the organization. The mass collaboration, like the connectivity, the um, also the volatility, but also the dependence on different uh, on internet on dig different digital platforms. It means if we don't have internet, uh, Facebook, for example, as you know, the um, in October when uh, the blackout happened with Facebook, then there were a lot of businesses, a lot of people were uh, basically kind of uh, hurt by that uh, um, uh, pause or break of the uh, Facebook and uh, WhatsApp and so on. Uh, mixed reality, so the mixed reality like virtual reality, but also the face-to-face -face in a hybrid mode. So this is a new normal for organizations. And uh, all, all in all, uh, people had to work together towards the United Nations um, uh, United Nations strategy for greener planet, for less polluted world, and so on. So, climate safe and equitable uh, world. So, all these uh, pillars are unified into one uh, the mission and vision for saving our planet. Therefore, uh, digitalization disruption is uh, imminently uh, one of the factors where. Uh, by using uh, different uh, platforms, by uh, digital platforms, by the uh, uh, enhancement of the digitalization uh, disruption, we can achieve uh, much better results and we can have better environment where to, to, to work and live. Uh, what are the advantages of the digitalization communication? Because digital communication is first of all that digital communication is imminently fast it's efficient but also convenient uh, the people the employees they can have a conversation in real time but with colleague or uh, client or friend um, uh, without of course you know leaving and going somewhere so they can be on the uh, workplace or they can be at home also the organizations uh, uh, led by different uh, leaders so they can uh, enhance these uh, digital channels to uh, communicate uh, with their entire 
so-called uh, workforce or with all the employees, all the colleagues. And also they can use different corresponding channels to uh, collect the feedback. So it means the feedback is very important. So nowadays with the online, it's very easy to get the feedback from uh, our colleagues and uh, customers. However, the uh, digital communication has its own uh, disadvantages. So uh, by being or having uh, constant access to the communication tools, of course, it's difficult for the employees to so-called disconnect at the end of the working day. So being on the mobile phone or uh, being, you know, with a um, uh, tablet and so on. So this is uh, pretty dis uh, distracting thing. Uh, also, without having a chance to unplug, people are also more likely to experience so-called burnout, which nowadays is very dangerous for uh, us, for the individuals, because the burnout is uh, something related to the mental health of the people and also uh, that we can overwork ourselves. Then uh, the digital communication strategy, uh, uh, when we are shifting and speaking, we have to say that uh, digital communication strategy is uh, first of all, involves a lot of um, uh, phenomena which are uh, appeared in the digital era, for example, like the chatbots or uh, the chat itself, the video conferencing, different systems, the project collaboration, like the virtual project collaboration tools. They are a great example of um, uh, which uh, asset for the people and for the organization has appeared. Um, this is uh, one uh, char one characteristic which uh, describes this uh, digital communication strategy. Then uh, each channel needs to be, of course, unique and purposeful for the companies and for the people because uh, more digital tools we add, we might have, we might get uh, more confused because we need to be able to use all of those, I would say, ocean of digital um, platforms and tools. So therefore we have to start and have a certain number of um, a digital communication strategy in order not to get confused and lost in the communication, especially in online communication with uh, the others. Then uh, for, for us, like for employees, they have to uh, so-called stay in control of how and when they receive work-related communication. So it means they have to have the filter to um, separate messaging from uh, you know personal from the working one. Uh, however, the urgent notification they have to be so-called reserved for only the most time sensitive information because we receive a really bunch of uh, new uh, bunch of new uh, information here. Uh, also the di digital communication tools they are not always easy to learn how to use sometimes we got confused because we install a new software or we would like to try to experiment with a new digital platform, but somehow, somehow we cannot adapt ourselves to the usage of the specifics of these digital platforms. And that's why uh, there, there is a phenomenon co uh, collocation called digital dexterity. So it means this is the levels of the difficulty of how uh, the use of the digital platform for all of us is. For some people, a uh, particular digital uh, platform is extremely difficult. For another, it's rather easy. Then uh, looking into the, looking into the uh, digital communication tools, because uh, by having a strategy, uh, for uh, having a strategy for uh, digital communication. We have to be fully aware that there are so many digital communication tools which are important for the individuals and also for the organizations. However, <clears throat> the most common ones which uh, um, we have to pay attention to are the following. Uh, email client or colleague with uh, built-in features. So, we know that uh, the usage of the different emails with the uh, 
building features, for example, organi organizing a meeting, uh, uh, setting up online call in the um, uh, through the email, you know, in the calendar, it's very convenient. The chat, the instant messaging, which nowadays we have a bunch of program softwares, digital platforms, which are used for uh, direct chat, which might help us to solve a problem. Project-based collaboration tools, which is uh, also very common across uh, the, the organization, the firms, the video conferencing, I mentioned that, the internal blog from the rector or the general manager, depending of uh, if we're in a university or if in a company. So um, how the bloggers uh, or the blogs, the internal blogs are working. Organization, news channels, so we have uh, uh, universities, news channels, uh, newsletters, there are also online discussion forums and many others. On the right side, you can see here some of the global companies, uh, for example, on the online chats, um, uh, for example, also on the video conferencing and so on. So um, in the end, we have to say that uh, the employees, they have to stay in the control how to receive this work related communications and they have to uh, filter the notification which uh, is quite uh, sensitive for the time and uh, what they would like to do uh, also the di digital communication tools they're not so of course easy to learn and to adapt so it takes time so we need to have training but also the practice the implementation in the real practice this is very important and again, we're coming back to the phenomenon of the digital dexterity, which I said that this is the level of difficulties for each of us uh, in using digital uh, platforms. So I would like to thank you for uh, that first uh, uh, lecture on digital communication strategy. We will continue uh, the next video lecture on effective management for um, digital communication. Uh, and uh, I'm very, again, uh, again to say, uh, very honored, very thankful that uh, for your attention. And please, I hope based on this presentation, you can start gradually working with the first assignment, uh, basically, which we'll be discussing also on the first meeting uh, later this week. So many thanks. I will uh, stop here the video and thank you for your attention. So have a good one.